I reckon Spider-Man is the coolest superhero. And other than super strength, super speed, and an even worse work-life balance, the only thing that separates me from him are his webs. So let's do something about that. So we're here at Ice Stunt Academy with my mate Ross, who's a real stuntman, and I've brought my spider web along. We're gonna test it out by swinging from this bar we've set up. Testing rig. Testing rig. And we're gonna see if we can trip over and disarm some bad guys, so let's go. Now I actually have tried building a device to let me swing like Spider-Man once before, but I thought for this video I'd just like to start fresh and focus specifically on replicating Spider-Man's web as closely as possible. But it turns out there are a few simple ways to actually produce a fibre from liquid without needing industrial equipment. The one I'm going to do now is actually a super cool way of making viscose, also known as rayon, also known as artificial silk. So to do this process, I'm going to need some sulfuric acid, some ammonia, and also a rock. Malachite, specifically. It turns out that malachite is almost pure basic copper carbonate. So I took some chips of it, and like any good chemist, I smashed the heck out of it with a hammer until I had a fine powder. When I add the malachite to the ammonia, it turns a very satisfying blue color. And this compound is uniquely able to dissolve cellulose which is the primary material in wood and also cotton wool. Once that's all dissolved, I can fill a syringe and extrude it into this sulfuric acid where it forms these strands of artificial silk. So this is really cool. It seems like a very straightforward way of making webs. I should be swinging around in no time, right? Well, not quite. So this is artificial silk, but why is it so weak? Well, on a molecular level, a polymer is made from small groups of atoms called monomers, which connect end to end with other monomers to form a chain. Different monomers produce chains with different strengths, but that's not the whole story. Making these chains longer dramatically increases the strength of your finished product. Like this Ziploc bag. It's made of polyethylene, where the chains are I'm guessing around 200 monomers long, and uh, it's not very strong. But those same monomers in chains of like 200,000 makes the strongest fiber in the world. More than twice the strength of real spider silk and, well, probably several thousand times the strength of my attempts. Unfortunately, it's really hard to make the chains that much longer, so they need to use some complicated and expensive industrial processes to achieve it. So instead of reinventing the turbojet engine, I'll just use some of this pre-made ultra-strong fiber. Even if I could make this exact material from liquid, this is just a lot less messy. All right, so I've got my rope. Now all I need is a way to make it stick. And that's gotta be pretty strong, because if my web unsticks while swinging, you know, that'll be a pretty sticky situation. The crucial thing here is that whatever I made needed to be cheap and simple, because Spider-Man leaves hundreds of these webs all over the city. And that thought led me to Velcro. Now obviously Velcro is way too weak for this, but the way it works is with a bunch of hooks sticking to a bunch of loops. And I thought, well, maybe I can make like a super Velcro using Dyneema loops and steel hooks. The steel hooks were the hard part. I designed and tested so many prototypes before I finally arrived at this design. The pinnacle of functional simplicity. Then I used some math and a stress simulation to find exactly the smallest size I could get away with if I used high strength alloy steel. So I had the hooks laser cut by a nearby shop and I was ready to go. Well, I needed to quickly grind off the sharp edge first. And now after tying the hooks on, the sticking mechanism was finished. In testing I found I didn't even need the loops, the string itself worked just fine. I call this creation the hook chain. Now this is one of those cases where the end result seems kind of basic, but that's the funny thing with engineering design. Simplicity is one of the hardest things to achieve, and often you have to take a tour of complex ideas before you can know how to make something simple. Okay, that's enough backstory. Let's go back to that stunt facility you saw at the beginning of the video so I can test this thing out. Cool, so I'm here with my web, and together with... Ro where is Ross, actually? Whoa! <laughs> and together with Ross, we're going to see if we can do some tripping and disarming. <laughs> you almost caught it! <laughs> that was brilliant, Adam. <laughs> there, I think that worked. 
That was cool, but the real test is going to be trying to swing from this. And I don't know about you, it seems like this would be really hard to hold. So I could try wrapping it around my hand like Spidey does in the comics, but man, that just seems so unpleasant. So I brought this gym ring to hold on to. Got my rip off Miles Morales safety wear and uh, well, let's give this a shot, eh? Well, that was terrible. It's uh, mostly my fault, I think. I'm sure I can do this, hang on. There we go. Alright, and then, whoop. Seems steady, so, uh... Hey, it worked! Ta-da! Well, that works. But uh, Spider-Man can't just sit there waiting to see if the hook is going to catch on or not, right? Sometimes he just needs to take a leap of faith. So, let's adjust our setup a little bit and give it a go. Oh. Yes! Great. Ross, you want to go? Totally. Let me add. We did a lot more testing than I'm showing here, and the hook chain honestly had a really high success rate as long as we timed it right. I'd say not even that far from 100%. <laughs> oh, what were you right. saying about that 100% success rate? Well, it's down to 90 now. Mine is still 100. There is one thing that I really do want to try. Let's see if it works. 